Um, uh, just a brief introduction. My name is Quoc Lee. Um, I'm currently a, a member of the Google Brain project. Uh, so Google Brain is basically uh, one of the most successful machine learning platform inside Google. Um, uh, this week, Google has announced that they open source the Google Brain infrastructure. And uh, uh, if you're interested in you know, using the platform, you should be able to uh, go online and download it. And they, um, the open source uh, is called um, TensorFlow. Um, and uh, um, uh, in this talk, I will uh, focus about on uh, the motivation of the Google Brain project uh, and some of the, the key successes behind uh, uh, Google Brain. Um, so um, the project was founded in 2011. Um, and uh, the motivation of Google Brain is that uh, at Google, we, are, um, we have to deal with a lot of data. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we have billion and trillion of websites. Uh, we also have a lot of YouTube videos. We also have um, a lot of emails. We have a lot of advertisement, um, and so on and so forth, so forth, and also activities. And then around 2011, we also realized that um, we also need to deal with a lot of new kind of devices, for example, Android phones. And when Android phones pick up, uh, we have to deal uh, with a, um, a lot more data. And because uh, on the Android phone, um, the, the screen is so small that we need them to be more and more intelligent. For example, if you have a collection of photos, you don't want to spend a lot of time browsing around the photos. Uh, you want a search functionality. For example, you can search for uh, my mother, and it would return images of my mother. Um, and then so also we also have Nest, uh, and Nest also want to be more intelligent. We also have the autonomous cars, and there are the autonomous, we want the autonomous car to drive itself as well. So there's a need for intelligent uh, decisions everywhere. And we, um, uh, we, we see that uh, that's a big opportunity, but it's also a challenge. Because for all the problems at Google, we also hire a lot of experts uh, to solve these problems. Uh, and every expert is, uh, is about time. We, uh, there's not enough talent. And a lot of time, we have to compete with a lot of people to get the talents. So the question is, can you, we build a centralized machine learning platform that we can deal with all, all these problems at the same time so that we don't have the need to actually um, uh, go out and find hundreds of people working behind each small project? And that's the motivation for Google Brain. Uh, so let's, uh, I, I want to go back. I work on machine learning for uh, 15 years. Um, so since I was an undergrad in, uh, in Australia. Um, and um, uh, I, uh, um, I work on a lot of things, for example, building robots. Uh, so um, this is a video, but I, uh, I don't think I have time to um, play it for you. Uh, so the idea behind, uh, so when I was a, a grad student, I w wanted to build a robot that can go around and collect objects in, um, in the office and give back to me. Uh, and you, when, uh, when you think about that, you find, oh, maybe the, the most of the time that I should spend on is to build a robot. But it turns out that that's not true. The most of the time that I spent on was trying to get the robot to actually recognize objects and understand my voice. That's the hardest component in, in the process of building. So it's not about the hardware that, make me, uh, that give me a headache. It's actually the software. And when you see an image on the camera, you can recognize that, oh, that's a stapler, and oh, that's a door open. Uh, that's the, the that's a door handle, and etc. etc. That's that's the hardest part. Uh, now, um, so for example, if you take uh, the state of the art computer vision system, uh, this is a, a picture taken from the camera of the robot into the scene, uh, and ask it to recognize a picture of mugs. Uh, now, it turns out that what it sees is that it can detect a bunch of mugs, but it's also there's a lot of false detections as well. This is state-of-the-art computer vision around 2010. Yeah? 
so something that we take for granted, namely recognizing objects, um, mugs and cups and so on very reliably, actually very hard for machines. Now, um, uh, and this turns out to be the key problem in machine learning. So it turns out in machine learning, uh, even though we work on AI and so on, um, there's one stage in machine learning we call human feature engineering. So what it does is that, uh, let's suppose that I have a face recognition problem. Uh, recognize uh, an image where there's a um, face in the image or not. Now, uh, I, uh, the, um, what I would usually do is I take the image and then transform it into some sort of core, core features. Um, and then run in some kind of classifier like SVM or something like that on, on the feature to recognize the face. Now, um, the features that what I call was uh, um, basically, in this case, it's like edges of the image because if you want to recognize a face, maybe you want to recognize the surrounding area of the face. And now, that kind of decision is made by a human expert. Um, and uh, if, if you, now, if you take that, um, this is basically people who study in uh, computer vision for a long time. But if you want to extrapolate that and then say, can you use that feature to, uh, on, um, to detect uh, spam emails, then the answer is no. And then we really need to hire other people to come up with those features. Um, so uh, uh, at Google, we became interested in the problem of feature learning. Namely, we want a system that will sort of uh, do not need the human in the loop of in the inventing features. And we be became uh, interested in a class of models called neural networks. It turns out that a neural network has this ability to learn functions of functions. And then fun in functions of functions, one of the layer in the network will basically invent the kind of features that we would like um, to invent. And it's actually very adaptive to your problem. Now, uh, for example, in the case of um, uh, um, object recognition in the image, what you can give to the network is basically uh, the pixels in the image. And the, the network will basically invent features like edge detectors or corner detectors and et cetera. And then so after so many layers, it will, it will form concepts like a face uh, or um, whether that's a cat or is it a car in the image. Um, and uh, at Google, we also worked on uh, scalability. So basically, since we have to deal with a lot of data, like uh, uh, for example, in, in the case of uh, websites, we have billion of uh, images, uh, billion of YouTube videos, so we want to scale the training. So uh, the way that we scale the training is basically using model parallelism. So we take a network uh, that I presented before, and then we break it into several uh, machines. So the first, uh, the, uh, the machine number one will compute the features on the left side of the image, and the machine number two will compute the features on the right side of the image, and etc. Now, uh, uh, that alone is not enough. So usually, what we do is uh, also data parallelism. What we do is we take our data set, uh, namely we have billions of uh, examples, and then we break it apart into several um, uh, chunks and train individual models independently. And then uh, these models will have a chance to uh, update the central parameter server, and the parameter server will once in a while will ask everybody to synchronize. Uh, and uh, that turns out that it's actually very scalable. We can use this system to scale down the training uh, of uh, voice uh, recognition. For example, uh, if you use Android today, um, the voice search on Android is, is basically using this facility. Uh, and before we have this facility of training, it takes us a few, um, uh, like a few months to train, uh, four months to train one model. So every time I have an idea, it takes me four months to actually test out the idea. Now after this framework, we can scale down the training uh, back to like a week. And then every time I have an idea, it takes me a week to test out the idea. We, uh, we, we still think that um, uh, a week is still uh, long, uh, so we're still working very hard to scale down that training time back to like a couple of days. So testing out ideas is faster. Um, uh, so unlike many uh, other uh, deep learn, uh, other machine learning 
um, algorithms before, what we find is that in deep learning, uh, as uh, so in, tr in traditional machine learning, as we increase the amount of data, the accuracy of the model uh, plateaus. But if you use deep learning, what you usually find is that at the beginning, when you don't have a lot of data, deep learning doesn't work very well. But as you increase the amount of training data, deep learning gets better and better to the point that it's actually substantially better than any traditional machine learning. And uh, something like that is very suitable for Google because we have a lot of, a lot of data. Um, so uh, uh, we, uh, the, one of the first tests that we did was basically uh, automatic features learning on YouTube. So what we did was basically given the Google brand watching YouTube uh, for um, uh, weeks, um, basically it's just like every moment it just fetch a YouTube video and watch it uh, like a, a grad student. Um, and then what it did was actually uh, it figured out that there's an important concept in, in YouTube videos called cat. Uh, it's because a lot of people, uh, uh, maybe 80% of the vid uh, YouTube videos have cats or something like that. Uh, so the, the system that we, have, we train has uh, used about 16,000 machines and it has about a billion uh, synapses. This is around 2011, by the way. Uh, so um, as more law, more slow progress, I think right now we we, sh uh, we should be able to use substantially less number of machines. Um, but uh, the when I say a billion uh, synapses, I mean a billion connections between the nodes in the uh, in the graph. Um, now uh, one th uh, these networks actually have some loose uh, connections with uh, uh, the neural networks in the brain. And then actually it turns out that in the brain we have about a few trillion connections. So even though we use 16,000 machines, we're still about a thousand way, a thousand uh, times smaller than the actual, uh, than the actual brain. Uh, but I think as uh, we get more, uh, more and more uh, uh, computation uh, and machines get faster and faster, I hope that uh, uh, we, we should be uh, come like a couple of order magnitudes closer uh, quickly. Um, so uh, this uh, result uh, feature on uh, um, a New York Times, uh, and this is the first time that uh, uh, machine learning made uh, the New York Times uh, after uh, since uh, a computer program uh, beat uh, the best chess player in the world. Um, so it's a very substantial result because it's a, it's, a, it's a watershed moment that people realize that it's possible to use machine learning to learn features by themselves. Uh, and this, this has very strong implications to a lot of domains because a lot of, in a lot of domains, if you, for example, you, uh, today I've heard a lot of talks about devices in a dumpster and so on. Uh, in a lot of these domains, maybe the, 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 the question is that inventing features turns out to be difficult. You really need to hire a lot of PhDs to actually invent the good features for the machine learning to work. But now you don't need that because the machine learning by itself can invent the features that you need. And that's very powerful. Um, we, we, use, uh, um, we use this at, uh, at Google um, for 50 products, and we have a lot of uh, few hundred teams working with us. So it's, a very, it's probably the most successful um, machine learning system inside Google. Uh, uh, so for, for, the, for, for this talk, I can briefly mention some of the uh, important applications uh, of Google, Google, Google Brain. And uh, in the domain of understanding images, understanding uh, speech and uh, understanding text. And these are the kind of application that's traditionally, traditionally very hard for Google. So before 2011, uh, we didn't have a very good solution for. Uh, so for example, in speech recognition, uh, in image recognition, uh, since 2011, uh, the error rate of uh, object recognition went from 28% to around 5%. So basically what you, uh, I mean is that uh, in 2011, if you give a thousand images, uh, then uh, of, you know, cats, dogs, cars, and et cetera, 
um, the accuracy, uh, um, the, uh, out of 1,000 images, uh, we will make about 280 mistakes. But right now, we should be able to make like 50 mistakes or something like that. And this is a substantially improvement um, in, in image recognition. So if you use, uh, if you use Google Photos, you, should, you already use something like this. Uh, so in Google Photos, uh, we group um, images according to the categories, and it allows you to search for certain categories. For example, you search for cars, and it will return you image of, uh, images of cars. Or if you search for faces, it will return you uh, image of uh, faces. Or if you um, want to see um, uh, a picture of your close friends, it's also a group uh, as well. Um, uh, so, for example, those are some, some of the uh, recognition that I found in my visualization. Um, in voice search, so we uh, improve the accuracy from, uh, sorry, uh, decrease the error rate from 23% to 8%. Uh, so uh, basically, um, that w what that means is that every, uh, in 2011, if you uh, uh, Every 10 words that you talk to the phone, we make about three mistakes. And right now, which is basically making the phone sort of unusable. But if right now, if you uh, 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 speak 10 words to the phone, uh, you can, um, you, uh, uh, the system will sh sort of make less than one mistake. So that's um, very, uh, a very Im important improvement. Uh, so recently, we also uh, launched a feature in um, our inbox for uh, smart reply. So you should be able to an give it like a short answer to some of your emails. And the system behind that is also uh, Google, Google Brain. Um, uh, I think it, it's making a lot of progress inside Google. Uh, so I'm very super excited about the progress. And uh, if you want to check out the software that we, be, we develop, uh, it's uh, in TensorFlow. It's called tensorflow.org. Uh, you can find the software. It's open source. Cool. Mm -hmm.